Hey, what's up you guys and welcome back to Gal. So in this video, we're jumping into Photoshop and I'm showing you how easy it is to remove the background from your subjects and even around the wispy hairs because that part can get kind of tricky. So I'll first show you how to do that. And then I'll show you how easy it is to Photoshop glasses on your subject, like different pairs of glasses to fit whatever scene you need and to make it look more realistic. And the glasses I'll be using are from Movement and more on Movement later. Without further ado, let's go ahead and jump on in. So here is the original photo inside of Photoshop. You can see as we zoom in that the background is kind of in this cottage cheese style and I want to remove it and actually replace it with a brick background. So to do that, let's go ahead and fit to screen up here at the top and over in layers, let's go ahead and duplicate the original just by dragging it down into this plus icon. And this will make a copy and we can rename this. Let's call it background remove because this is where we're going to remove the background and we can turn off the visibility of the original and then we're going to make another layer let's click the plus icon and let's call this the color reveal because this is going to be actually a solid color let's choose this in solid color and let's go ahead and make this a red color and then let's move it beneath the background remove. So then when we start to remove the background, we'll see the red and it'll make it easier to see if we're missing any of the white that we're removing from the background. So we're gonna start with the hair because that's the most difficult part. And then we will remove part of the blouse and the rest of the background. So let's go ahead and zoom in here on this hair. And what we're going to use is what is called the background eraser tool. So just click and hold if you do not see that and select background eraser tool. And up here you can adjust the size of the brush. I'm liking it at 254 and you can adjust the hardness as well. And from here, you're just going to make sure it's sampling once sampling this background once, and you want to make sure the limits are discontiguous. The tolerance is going to change depending on the photo. So I will explain more about that once we get there for testing. You also wanna protect the foreground layer, which is the color of the hair. Now there's a lot of different colors here, but around the edges it's a little bit lighter. So after you check this, so if it was unchecked, be sure to check it and then go down to the color picker. And here you can just choose a color. So you can click until you hit the right color that you want. So let's say around this color and hit okay. So after you select the color, go up to tolerance and we will start with the lowest tolerance. Let's start with around 10%. And as we click, you wanna click and hold and then move over the hair. Now here you can see there's a ton of white still. It's not removing it perfectly. So the tolerance is too low. We need to increase that. So let's command Z and let's try 25%. Let's see how that looks. All right, it's looking a little bit better, but you can still see some white around the edges. If we zoom in, you can see it's too much white around the hair. So what we need to do is Command Z to undo that or Control Z on a PC. And let's increase the tolerance even more. Let's try around 56%. And then let's zoom in and click. And then here it's looking a lot better. Now it's not gonna be exactly perfect and that's okay, but it's looking a lot better. So I'm just gonna quickly go around remember, be sure to click and hold. And if you accidentally click here and start, it's not gonna work. You have to click on the background layer and then go, okay? So I'm gonna quickly go around and do this around her whole head and then we'll move into the blouse. And down here we can zoom in. And if you control click, you can reduce the size to be much smaller for precision. And we can go in and just gently go around the collar here. Like so, and we can smooth this area out with the regular eraser tool. Let's go over to the eraser tool now. And let's just smooth that out to make this a little bit smaller. All right, and now I'm just going to zoom out 
and use the eraser tool to go around the blouse. We don't need to use the background eraser tool in this case because the blouse does not have such a jagged area as the hair. It's just a smooth area. So I'm going to control click and I'm going to increase the size again. That's about good. And I'll quickly just do an outline. <laughs> So now this whole area that's red is actually transparent. If I turn off the red here, you can see it's just a transparent background. The grid means transparency. And as we zoom in, it looks pretty good. The shape of the hair looks like it's still intact. And all we need to do now is delete the rest of the background. Well, we're not going to use the eraser tool. We could. It'll just take a little bit more time. Instead, I'm going to use the magic wand tool or hit W on your keyboard. And you can just select this area here and you can see how it put an outline selection around this whole area and then hit delete. And let's do the same over here. Hit delete and it's gone. And now we can turn back on the red layer to see if we're missing anything. We can actually use the zoom tool to go inside here and see if we need to make any adjustments. You can see here some of the cottage cheese texturing is still there. I keep saying cottage cheese, but that's what it looks like. So let's go ahead and just Get rid of some of that here so that way it's not so obvious. You won't see it too much with our new brick background and you will see in just a second what that looks like. So let's go around the edges here just to smooth this out, just to get rid of some of the texture. <laughs> So now we have our transparent background. It's that simple. Now we need to add in our brick layer. So I'm going to go into Finder and I'm going to take this red brick JPEG and drop it into Photoshop. And I'm going to actually make this a little bit bigger so the bricks look bigger behind her. That looks about good. And then I'll hit the check mark. And then we need to drag this layer beneath her. And now you see the bricks are there. Now we want to add a little bit of blur so that way it's not quite in focus. So that's where we're going to go up to filter and select Gaussian blur. And let's put it at, let's try 10 and see how that looks. And that looks pretty good. So you can see the original. If we turn these off, we can turn on the original and it had the cottage cheese background. And let's go ahead and turn that off. And now we have the new. So now I want to add some glasses. If you guys want to Photoshop glasses on, I got these glasses from Movement. They are the Rex Everscroll blue light emitting glasses, which are pretty cool. So they're great. They help improve your eyes so you don't get migraines from the screens. Now these glasses, I removed the background. Now I'm just going to drag it because it's transparent and drop it on her face here. And then of course you can't see them because we need to move it above. Her. And now we need to make some adjustments so it looks more natural. So I'm going to zoom in on her face just by hitting Command Plus to zoom in. And I'm going to make them a little bit bigger and place them like they're resting on her nose. I think that looks good. And now we need to change some of the coloration. So the first thing I like to do is add a drop shadow. So go to Effects and add a drop shadow. And you can see it just adds some nice natural uh, drop shadow. Of course, you want the opacity to maybe be a little bit more subtle. If it's 100%, it's too much. But we can just make it around 80, 74 is fine. And the angle is at 30 degrees. I think that looks good. And the distance, you can have fun with that one. But you can see I want it to be a little bit lower. So around here is good. And you can see the before and the after. And it just looks like there's a natural shadow happening from the glasses. And next we can add an inner shadow. And this just helps make the coloring look a little bit more natural. And then click on the inner shadow. And here we want to adjust the opacity to make it more blended, the natural color. You can play around with the distance and the angle. But I think that looks good. So now we can turn off the effects and you can see the before. It just looks a little bit unnatural in the after, which makes it look more like it's realistic. So now I'm going to draw in some blue shapes in the lenses to make it look like the glasses are the Everscroll technology, which emits blue light. So to do that, I'm actually going to go over to the pen tool and make sure you're in the shape method 
and change the fill to a blue color. You can also select on this to choose a different blue color. And then I'm going to zoom in and just draw. I'm going to click and click and hold to make a curved line and go around the edges until I close it off. And then I'll close it off and then I'll go on over here to the other lens and do the same thing. All right, now we have the two shapes and then we need to change the blend mode. But first, let's go ahead and hold shift and select both of these shapes and control click to merge the shapes as one. And then from blend modes, let's change it to soft light. And then let's change the fill to around 40%. So now if I click the selection tool up here, I can show you the before and the after. It's just a slight difference. And you can, of course, adjust the fill to maybe be a little bit lower, 35%. So now I can zoom out and it's looking pretty natural. So you can see what it looked like before I added the effects. It just looks kind of fake. By adding in the shapes inside and the effects around the edges, it looks more realistic. And the exact glasses that I used here, Movement actually sent me. And Movement sponsored this video. They sent me three different glasses to try out. And all of them have the EverScroll blue light emitting technology. And what this does is it helps prevent all the blue light from your screens, your iPhones. Anytime you're looking at a screen, it helps that light from going into your eyes, which has been proven to cause migraines and sleep issues. There are lots of different styles that you can browse on their website for different frames and you can try them on. And what better yet, you can use my technique I just showed you in Photoshop to see how those photos look good on you. And I've actually provided a transparent version of these glasses in my description box below. Also there, you can get 15% off movement glasses. If you guys are interested or, or any of your family members want to try these glasses, you can use my code in the link in the description to get 15% off. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If it helped you out, be sure to give this video a thumbs up and leave a comment below and let me know what type of video effects, photo effects, or even audio effects that you guys have been itching to learn. That's what I do here. I try to help you guys out. So just let me know what you guys wanna learn next below. And just a reminder, you can get 15% off movement glasses like I have here. And thanks to movement, you can use my link and save 15% off ongoing. So you can tell your dad about it. You can tell your mom about it. Everybody uses screens now. It's super important to protect your eyes in the digital age that we live in now. All right, that's it for this video. See you guys next time. Bye.